Now then, folks, how are we doing? I'm cutting this one very fine. Again, it might be the early hours of the next day when it drops on YouTube for you. But this is day 11 of my 30-day film challenge. And if you watched yesterday's vlog, you'll see that I ended it by saying that I was going to take a risk today um, and to see whether that risk paid off. Now, unfortunately, it didn't. Uh, and I'm going to explain why. As you've seen the title of this video, uh, this is a review, my my brief non-spoiler thoughts on the brand new Mission Impossible 7 Dead Reckoning Part 1. And I went into this with the, I wouldn't say the expectation, but with the hope that Mission Impossible would deliver what it's delivered for the last four films, I would say. Uh, Ghost Protocol and three films, yeah, Ghost Protocol, Fallout and Rogue Nation and and provide us with, you know, one of those truly sort of jaw-dropping set pieces along with a great plot and, and whatever else. And this film, it didn't give me that today. There wasn't a moment where I sort of, you know, did the, as, as the, as the criteria wanted today, the whole sort of, yes, in the cinema. There were a few moments where I laughed out loud because that some of the, the intentional comedy worked incredibly well. Um, and there were a few moments where I was sort of like, ooh, there was a particular bit, uh, that I'm not spoiling when I say there was a particularly claustrophobic fight in an alleyway. And, and when you watch the film or if you've seen the film, you'll know what I mean. Um, but there wasn't any moment, even the the sort of the, the the climactic big stunt that these films always build towards didn't sort of make me go ah, you know, or anything like that. So it didn't hit the criteria for today's film, I'm afraid. So I'll come back to today's criteria at the end of this video. But I'm just going to give you a few thoughts on this film. So did I enjoy it? Yeah, I would say on the whole I enjoyed this film. Tom Cruise gives a great performance as Ethan Hunt, as always. I think by this point, it really is just an extension of himself. I don't know that he's necessarily playing uh, a character at this point. I think he just turns up and he's Tom Cruise. You know, It felt the same watching him in Top Gun Maverick. It felt the same watching him in Edge of Tomorrow. And I think he's just got that sort of quality that, uh, you know... He's a much better actor than somebody like Stallone or Arnie or whatever, or even Harrison Ford, where he kind of just sort of turns up and nine times out of ten he just plays himself and it works sort of thing. You know, there's the occasional performance where it's, uh, you know, something a little bit different, you know, like something like Collateral, um, for argument's sake. But, but yeah, he just turns up and does the Tom Cruise thing. The supporting cast, the regulars are all there. Rebecca Ferguson, Simon Pegg, Ving Rhames, uh, and a welcome return as well from the first film by uh, Henry Searcy. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, but he, um, he plays, um, the, the sort of the bureaucratic director that he played in the first one again. Uh, and he has some, some interesting moments in the plot. It's an interesting plot, is this one. Basically, the plot is rogue AI um, that's become sentient and is is aware that IMF are basically sort of on the, on the mission to try and shut it down before it becomes its own sort of uh, superpower in the world and basically holds everybody to ransom. And there are, there are different sort of uh, schools of thought within the film on whether or not, you know, it'd be a good thing or it'd be a bad thing and the various different intelligence agencies from both the States and across the world, MI6 and, and wherever else, Interpol and whatever else that they, that they get involved with have all got slightly different ideas about how this thing should be dealt with and all those different people end up sort of coming together and ultimately chasing Ethan Hunt. Where I had a bit of an issue with this is, well, there were two things, really. I think the last three films have set the bar so high that you go into these films expecting something jaw-dropping. And for me, I got a really fun action film, but I didn't get that sort of, again, like the category of today's video says cheer in the, in the cinema or the jaw-dropping moment or anything like that. I felt like it was sort of almost in some places dialed back a little bit. And that leads me on to probably my, my second biggest criticism of it is the fact that it's a two-parter. It suffers from from what I'm going to dub um, and me, Laura and our friend Louise who went to see it uh, all, all sort of had this same commentary when we came out of it. But what I'm going to dub as part one syndrome because it knows it's building to something. It doesn't want to sort of give you all the goods. And so everything felt just that little bit reserved even like I say, the, the the climactic sequence at the end felt like it was 
it was holding back because it's got to save something bigger and better for part two. And that's kind of where I sort of came in on this. Like I, said, I thought the performances were good, but I felt it was a little bit dialed back compared to the first. Um, I also saw that they, they lifted quite a lot of things from, you know, other action movies. And in particular, there were a lot of nods to James Bond in this one. And, and normally this kind of does its own thing, but there were a lot of sort of like Spectre and Tomorrow Never Dies and even for your eyes only sort of inspired scenes in it that, um, that that I noticed straight away and they felt like they were just plucked from those films and put into this um, but yeah I, I sound like I'm complaining and giving it a bad review and I'm, I'm really not I enjoyed it I really uh, really had a had a fun time with it but it didn't give me the bit that I wanted the cheer in the cinema bit that would have um, meant that it was a success for today's challenge um, but it was an enjoyable part one and my friend Louise summed it up perfectly when she said it'll be better to come back and revisit this and judge it as a whole when we have part two next summer and I couldn't agree more with that I think when we're able to view this as a whole as it was intended I think that'll really uh, really sort of cement its legacy and its place in the ranking of the franchise but I would definitely recommend going to check it out in the cinema so I didn't want to leave this video without sort of acknowledging a couple of films that made me go yes in the cinema um and being a big superhero nerd that I am um and being a big Bond nerd that I am the ones that immediately sprung to mind when I was thinking about watching a, a video you know DVD at home here um to do it were Spider-Man No Way Home, the, the scene in that where, and spoilers if you've not seen it, but the scene where Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man comes through the portal and reveals his, himself, takes his mask off and uh, and reveals himself to Ned and MJ, that, that was a moment where I was like, yes! And um, the, the same when uh, when Tobey Maguire showed up as well, and the Matt Murdock cameo, um, I thought was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, I really loved that. Um, that was a moment. There were, there were moments in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny um, that, that had me do that, and I won't say what they are, um, but I am doing a spoiler review on that with Phil that will be out on the channel soon, so you check out for that. When I saw Spectre for the first time in the cinemas back in 2015, I went with my buddy Ed, who sometimes watches the channel, so hello, mate, if you're by chance watching this. Uh, but when they revealed Christoph Waltz's uh, Oberhauser to be Blofeld and they showed the cat, that was a moment as well. So they were some of the films that I was sort of thinking about watching watching um for, for for this challenge but like i say i decided to take a gamble it didn't quite pay off and uh, i went to see mission impossible dead reckoning oh goodness me guys even at nearly midnight my hay fever is still absolutely having my life you can probably see it in my eyes i've just had a, a massive sneezing fit which i've cut out for you if you enjoyed the video today please leave it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts on this new mission impossible film or films that have made you cheer out loud in the cinema in the comments down below and if you're coming across me for the first time today hello nice to meet you please think about subscribing i promise i talk about films and collecting dvds and blu-rays not having uh sneezing fits and hay fever uh, but if that sounds like it's going to be something that's up your street it really would mean the world to me if you could subscribe and i will see you tomorrow for day 12 of my 30 day movie challenge bye for now